We got Mark Henry joining us right now, the world's strongest man. Mark, how's it going today, man? It's going great, man. How are y'all? Doing fantastic and love to see you and love to know that we, the stuff that you're doing with AEW. Really excited to talk about that. But I, I had some thoughts this morning as I was driving in listening to some Olympic discussions that are going on. And I want to get your thoughts on, on a couple things. One, would you sleep on one of the cardboard beds that, uh, that are, they're currently uh, giving the Olympians out there to, to sleep on? No. No? Uh, I, I, I have a strong opinion on this, man. Like, I, I, I really think that I would have, uh, like, a training session or set up, and I would have my day on the day of the Olympics and do the best that I could do at home and let my results speak for themselves. I, I, I probably wouldn't go. Probably wouldn't even go all the way to the, all the way to Tokyo. That's fascinating. It, you would just. No. I wonder if they would let people do that. If that would be a, a way that they could do it, because uh, understanding the circumstances that we're in right now, I, I, I yeah, also. I, I, that, that's one of the things that I, I always wondered, like, would they make some concessions for people that were at risk? Um, or, you know, I, I was very disappointed in seeing that the, uh, the blind girl could not bring her, uh, help her with her. Yeah. Like, uh, it's just, it's way too much. If, if you can't do it in the confines of what's good for the athlete, then you shouldn't do it. When, when you look back at, Specifically, the 96 Olympics, it, it's it's amazing. You made the Olympics. Do you just look at it and you're like, I was on the Olympic team. That's insane. Or do you ever reflect when the Olympics come around and you're like I, I disappointed at all because people thought like, you know, if not for the injury, you're going to win the gold. Like, how, how do you reflect on the Olympics? You know what? I, I, I never had any negativity about it. Um, I, I was one of the best athletes on the planet. And uh, I got to compete against the people that uh, were my peers in that sport. Uh, yes, I got an injury. Um, I was not favored to win uh, because, you know, mainly the, the drug testing policies were not where they are today. And uh, if it was, if, if the Olympic Committee worked like they said they would, uh, maybe Mark Henry would have would have kept on competing for another four years and tried it again, but I had lost all hope in the Olympic Committee at that point that they would do the right thing by the athlete, and so I bowed out gracefully and um, and went and did my own thing. How do you feel about the Olympic Committee now? Then do we feel like not that it's on a hundred percent level playing field, but significantly more level than it was then? It, it definitely is for weightlifting. Um, you know, you, there's been movies come out now about how corrupt and uh, the, you know, using the KGB to transfer information and uh, athletes hiding from drug <laughs> testing. And, um, you know, I, I, I feel like I won, man. Um, a lot of the guys, they took so many drugs that, you know, a lot of my peer group, uh, have all died uh, from heart attacks Man. and different things. So me still being here and living a, a, a good life, uh, I feel like I won. Now, my co-host, Mike Bassick, he has a very shiny dome over here. Uh, <laughs> he, uh, he was on the uh, World Series or the, the, the baseball qualifier for the Olympics, and they ended up winning a bronze medal, but he didn't get to go. Should they send him a bronze medal for getting them there? Yes, they should. See, I mean, we told he, you, Mike. He contributed, and if he contributed, he deserves uh, everything that comes with it. There we go. They should put all his merch in a bag, <laughs> and all his merch. I'll take you it. You know how important gear is to athletes? <laughs> like, we, we want the merch, man. Send me my shoes and my sweatsuit. I'll take it. It was just the wrong year, Mark. I was on the team in 06 when it was the qualifying time, not in 08 when it was the Olympic time. We pushed the campaign, though, to get yeah, him that bronze someday. medal. So it's on our on our bucket. You know, list. you guys are living my dream, man. Like, I I, I'm, I have a show on Sirius XM where we, we talk pro wrestling. And I'm a sports guy. I mean, I, I study, I, I prep, uh, I listen, I read everything there is. I make phone calls and get 
first accounts of what's going on in the in the sports world. Like uh, y'all living my dream. I I, I love y'all work. Oh, well, thanks, let's man. uh let's put you on the spot here about the NFL because the Cowboys are headed to training camp today. Uh, everything kind of starts up tomorrow. We're the home of the Dallas Cowboys. First, I want to talk about you and the NFL because you got to try out for the Houston Astro or Houston <laughs> Oilers. Correct. That would have been very interesting. <laughs> You know, I had fun uh, with the Oilers. Bob Young worked me out. Uh, God rest his soul. He was uh, best friends with my coach and manager, Terry Todd, who also has passed away. Um, they they really thought that, you know, if you're going to give football up and focus on Olympic sports, that you should at least get tested and see what you can do. And, um, man, I, I had the time of my life working out. Um, of course, like basically like a combine type of thing, uh, everything was off the charts. And then it was like, you know, agilities and, uh, Ackerman, how much of the game did you understand? And, you know, I kind of passed that with flying colors. Uh, but you know, I was a kid, I was 18 years old at the mm. time. And, um, I think Eric Swan that played with the, uh, Arizona Cardinals, he and I were the last two non-collegiates wow. to go to an NFL training camp. And um, it was a good experience. Now, Dallas Cowboys, I don't know how much you're following the Cowboys. Do you have any thoughts on the 2021 Dallas Cowboys? I think the Cowboys are going to surprise a lot of people. Uh, they lost games last year because of you know, structure and, and bad coaching, basically. Um, they made some horrible decisions personnel-wise. <laughs> yeah. Uh, as, yeah, you would say. Uh, as well as, you know, just schematics. Like, you know, you put people in bad spots that, you know, that's not in their gifting and not in their skill set, and, and that's what you get. You know, the worst defense that's ever been fielded by that team. <laughs> yeah. Offensively, a lot of things that happen to them uh, were were accident. You know, you start the season with Ezekiel Elliott uh, getting COVID and never really being able to recover, uh, you know, throughout the season. And, you know, like he's one of the prime examples of um, COVID does affect you in a big, big way because he never fumbled more than two times in a, in a season. He was fumbling two times a game, as it seemed like. Um, you know, it's just there were things that weakened him. I think that hopefully he's uh, got his bearings and, and, and will be more of a productive Zeke Elliott that we've seen in years past. Uh, of course, everybody knows what happened with Dick, Dak Prescott. Uh, but there were some good things that came out of the offense. Um, the emergence of C.D. Lamb and Pollard both being quality yeah. uh, players and – uh, even even Diggs did a hell of a job, you know, like, you know, as a, a, a rookie going in and, and competing against the pros and, and, and making a name for himself. But the Cowboys were just behind eight ball, both tackles going down, your quarterback going down. I love seeing Schultz step up. Uh, I can't yeah. wait to see the two wide receiver uh, or the two tight end sets that the Cowboys used this year with Jarwin and, and Schultz. So, like, uh, they, there's a lot to look forward to. I, I hope you'll appreciate the wrestling-esque turn this next question might take. Mm. Do you have higher expectations for the Cowboys in 2021 or the Texas Longhorns football team in 2021? And are you sad to have seen a and pass you guys by? What are you doing right now? You know what? I, I don't. I don't think that A and M. That's that's your opinion. A <laughs> uh, and M is is a is a hell of a team. Got a great coach, a coach that's won a championship. Like they they've got a lot going for them. Um, but if they were so good and they're so powerful, why would they not play Texas Longhorns in a one on one? Get them. Because we know? have lots so, of already good teams on our schedule, Mark. We're very busy. <laughs> Well, you say you say our. Uh, I, I assume that you're an Aggie. Yes, uh, yes, I am. Yes, if, I am. If you even graduated. No, I didn't. Oh, Mark, I just want to tell you real quick. 
I don't know. That's incredible <laughs> that you would say that. I absolutely went to Texas A&M and absolutely did not graduate from there. So that is a very fair point. So I come from a family in, in, in Southeast Texas where all the boys in my family that were athletes, they went to A&M. Wow. My brother graduated, got a master's degree from A&M. My cousin Sam, who played behind my brother on the record crew defense, um, went to AM and graduated and uh, won a Super Bowl. Um, Pat Henry and Sam Adams, both of those guys were dominant uh, athletes at AM. And and when they, when they recruited me, I was like, I just left one country ass town. I oh, my God. To <laughs> I am not going to College Station. I love you, Mr. Cheryl, but thank you very much. <laughs> Goodbye. As somebody who went to AM, that is a very fair perception of our town. Very fair. Now, I switching gears to tomorrow night, and by the way, I live in Garland. I cannot tell you how excited I am that AEW is back in Garland for a second time. Now, the first time y'all were in there, I think it was December of 2019, like right before everything got kind of shut down. You were not with the company then. You're with the company now. What drove you to AEW? And I feel like more than any other company, AEW excels with the fans back because the atmosphere for Dynamite and for y'all's pay-per-views have been bananas. Yeah, the, the talent at AEW is, is uh, on, really strong on the athletic side. Uh, they do a lot of things that people can't do, um, they're, but they're young. And my, my role is to come in and give the experience uh, that I've had at the top um, and, and the journey on the way to the top. And uh, I've always wanted to be uh, an executive in pro wrestling because, you know, I've, I've, I've went through every facet of it uh, from talent, working in media, working in marketing, working in uh, community service, whatever it is, I, I put myself in that spot where I can learn. Um, spent a lot of time in our production office talking to our production uh, experts and like, like, I know what it is that everybody does, so uh, I respect it. And I, that's that's something that I want all the talent to do. Know everybody's name. Walk around and introduce yourself and be respectful. And and that that's going to carry you a long way. Uh, Talent-wise and show-wise, AEW puts on a product that's just so exciting. You, you, you hardly ever have time to take a deep breath. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, if you're talking, you're going to miss something like it is. It is a hell of a exciting show. And I can't wait to get to Garland and uh, and, and see see our guys perform. Yeah, Kevin, we, we've had you know, we had Cody on, I believe, like in the infancy of yeah. AEW. Yeah. Uh, we had Brandy on back in the day, too. And then we had Cody and Dustin. We've had yeah. multiple AEW guests. And one of the things that I think I took from all those interviews is that the Cody's vision for it was to to really say, you know what, wrestlers really do need to have their own say in what they do and how they create what their characters are. And that really is something that it looks like all the wrestlers are passionate, really passionate about what they do in that entire group. Is he out there just kind of blazing a trail on his own? Or is he like, you know, everybody's coming with me on this? Well, Co Cody is a guy that uh, had a lot of talent and has a lot of talent, but was not allowed to use his talent because the sum of his parts. Okay. He's not 6'5". He's not 240 pounds. So a lot of times perception um, is, was, was of what a wrestler should look like and what a wrestler should be. Uh, it affected Cody's success path. Uh, Cody and, and all the guys like him are at AEW, and they have a chip on their shoulder. They want to show you and prove to you that you don't have to be 6'5 and 240 to get the job done. And there's about 25 guys on that roster that should have been, should have had the opportunity to compete at any place in the world, and they didn't for whatever reason. But with that being said, AEW is the venue for them to go and show the world what uh, a, a artist like Cody is 
because what we do is art. It's not just a, a physical sport. Uh, you have to be able to understand psychology. Sometimes it's simple, uh, big versus small, fast versus slow, good versus evil. But when you really excel in pro wrestling is when you can take somebody on an emotional ride. You can, you can make them mad when you want to make them mad, sad, happy, frustrated, whatever emotion that it is. And uh, AEW has some of the best in the business at that. Kind of like his raw retirement speech. You're in one oh, place, and then all of a sudden at the end of it, you're like, oh, my God. I When you walked out, like I watched wrestling long enough, and I know you've probably heard this a zillion times, but... When you walked out, I was like, no way. It's an angle, everything like that. And by the and it was just so masterfully done that by the time your turn on Cena actually happened, I lost my freaking mind, <laughs> as did everybody in the crowd, as did I was like, I think you need to stop wrestling at this point and go out to Hollywood because <laughs> that was the most amazing performance. Like Meryl Streep would have stood up mm -hmm. and applauded. Absolutely. It was it was unreal. It's a shame that uh Pro wrestling doesn't have a spot where you can get an Emmy or an Oscar. <laughs> um, I, I, I would have gla graciously went to the podium and, and gave my acceptance speech for my Oscar. Well, Mark, you're you're welcome on this show anytime. Your Cowboys, back. your Cowboys analysis was spot on, man. Looking forward to talking to you again. Looking forward. I know Kevin's going to try and lose his voice at AEW yeah, coming up. for so. sure. Thanks a lot, man. Hey, man, I, if you if y'all around, man, come out, man. I'd love to meet you guys in person. Absolutely, I'll man. be there tomorrow. Have I will be one. there tomorrow. There he goes, Mark you Henry. let the security know that Mark Henry is is uh, expecting me, and uh, I'll, I'll put a buzz in their ear that, hey, man, I got some sports guys coming. Like, make sure they get to me. And if not, you'll whoop their ass worse than you wanted to beat down that Peacock app the other night. I know, I, I saw. People for free. Yeah, okay, okay, fair, fair, free fair. Get you locked up. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mark. Have a great day, man. Mark Henry. All right, man, appreciate y'all loving AEW.